Hey guys, what's up? So, thought I would change my uh, four, or, uh, IAC valve on my Holly HP system from the uh, right now. I have currently have like a LT1, one of those uh, little uh, you know what are they called the stepper based uh, my Bronco there, there the stepper based IAC motors, and I wanted to try this Ford. Um, I actually I've always had a lot of issues with the IAC motors and these aftermarket fuel injection systems and. I had the same thing in my original projection system. I had the same thing in my, you know, when I had the Holy Terminator throttle body on there. So, um, sometimes my, my car, if I stopped too fast, would like hunt all over the place. You know what I mean? It wouldn't, it felt like the IAC couldn't respond fast enough or something. I don't know, but it always seemed to be related to the IAC motor. So, uh, from what I was reading online, these are supposed to be actually, they flow more air and they also, they respond a lot faster. So there's there's a big also a big difference in how these things are controlled. This one is actually controlled by pulse width modulation, and the uh, the standard like Chrysler slash GM IEC valves are I guess are just voltage and stepper. So a little bit different in how they're controlled, and there is a, there is actually an option on the uh, I've already taken it apart, and I gotta clean this out. But this originally came off that junkyard pole when I was doing the uh, 5.0. I couldn't figure out which route I was going to go with the, uh, you know, the EEC4, the factory fuel injection, or if I was going to, you know, stick with the Holy. But obviously, we know which one I did. So, but uh, yeah, I'm hoping to control, be able to control my IEC a little bit better. So, um, I do actually have the factory uh, wiring with the connector that I had bought originally for my Terminator. So I'm going to be able to wire that in. But I'm going to clean this thing up and. Probably gonna powder coat this too, maybe, or, or paint it. Definitely gonna sandblast it because I don't want to put this dirty part of my engine. But it, this actually should be, I think, a original Ford Motorcraft. So I don't even know if it works though. So, but it looks—I mean, it's pretty dirty inside. I mean, this thing's probably what 30 years old or more. So I think it originally was an 86 or 88 that I pulled, took it off. It was a non-high output uh, uh, 5.0 engine. So, all right, so let's clean this up. That's the original gasket there. That's the thing, and I actually had taken the wiring harness so I can just cut the pigtail and resolder it, recrimp it, whatever, you know. But, uh, all right, let's get this thing cleaned up. We'll get it going. Right, I don't know if you can see that, but it's kind of cool. This is, I think, I like this design better than the uh, GMI AC. It's like a double valve. But I have a pretty cleaned out carb cleaner. This uh, B12 chem tool. So now I'm actually going to put it back together, put some tape over here, and sandblast this thing to get it all clean again. And then, um, I don't know what's inside of it, that's plastic, so I can't really, I can't take it apart and powder coat it because I don't know if this plastic would melt in there. So I'm just going to paint it. So, I mean, I definitely prefer to powder coat, but, yeah, sorry, I have an ultrasonic cleaner. <laughs> so I'm just going to put some warm water in there and heat it up and put it in there. Minutes. Okay, we'll try that. I love when seeing these things when they first go on. You can see all the crud coming off of it, you know. Yeah. Alright, take a look at that. Yeah, I think it's super clean inside now. And that's actually after a lot of carb cleaning too, so... And a little dirty water. Alright, time to get this thing uh, sandblasted and painted. Alright. Alright, so now I'm going to sandblast that part. So... Let's take a look here, if we can see that in there. So just do a matter of in this. I forgot to turn my blower on, but get the idea. All right, I wish I could powder coat this thing, but uh, there's some plastic parts internally, so I want to put it in the oven, but uh, below it's my 4R70W. All right, so I'm gonna throw some black on there, gloss black, and uh, get it going. I know my workbench is a rough mess here, but uh, all right, so I, t I cut off the, the connector from the, uh, the original IAC motor off the Ford harness, the 5.0 harness I originally pulled from the junkyard. So I don't have these connectors, so I'm going to actually open these up and then recrimp them and solder them. And reuse those and uh, get rid of this and uh, start making this harness for the uh, IAC motor. All right. All right, there it is. That's the uh, IAC sensor painted black, and this is the wiring harness I created. 
I, uh, it's the weatherproof connector that I took off the old harness. I resoldered all the connections. It's a nice weatherproof connector. And this is the output of the wire. And that, I, like I said, I soldered everything. It's, it's an off-roading truck and it's gonna be bouncing around everywhere. Shrink wrap right there. Comes out, that's my switch 12 volt lead. And this will be providing negative pulse width modulation. And that's gonna be act actuating the actual, uh, you know, putting the duty cycle on this thing, setting the uh, frequency. And that's gonna go into the main harness of the uh, ECU. All right.